collection of 30 great soul hits. Ooh, you like good music. <laughs> that sweet soul music. They may be gone, but their music will live forever in this big collection. Uh, yeah. You'll get Otis Redding. You'll get Marvin Gaye. The godfather of soul, James Brown, and Wilson Pickett. Jackie Wilson and ZZ Hill. Luther Vandross and Little Milton. You'll get two CDs containing 30 great soul memories. And if you order with your credit card, you'll also get Simply Soul, 11 more great songs featuring Bobby Blue Bland, Marvin Cease and Denise LaSalle, absolutely free. How can we forget Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell? Lou Rawls and Johnny Taylor. Your credit card, and you'll receive three CDs and over 40 soul classics. Here's how to order. in Christ. He is a new creation. Presenting a new CD from the two-time inspirational country music award winner, Steve Richard, Greatest Gospel. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. I have decided all to Jesus I surrender Are you washed in the blood of Not available in stores. Order yours now for just $19.95 plus shipping and handling and we'll include a second copy, a $20 value as a gift, absolutely free. But you must call the number on your screen now or visit steverichardmusic.com. Act quickly and receive a free upgrade to priority shipping.
straight in the water from the top. Six three IMG. In the water, God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Now wait in the water. Don't be disobedient. Who's that yonder? Welcome to 963 IMG. I am your host, St. Patrick. Gots to be obedient and wait in the water. Come on, come on, come on. Wait in the water, children, now wait. That's right, 963 IMG, this is Spit. Spiritually powered, inspirational thoughts. Water. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you just got to sit back and wait in the water and you will indeed find a spiritual blessing that you need. 963 IMG, what? Once again, my name is St. Patrick, and this is Spit, Spiritually Powered Inspirational Thoughts. This is where you come to get your spiritual fix, you know, as we find new and improved ways to worship and to lift our Savior. So that's what we do, ladies and gentlemen, and this is like no other day we have to give the Lord thanks for his blessing upon us. You know, you have to believe in something else. You're going to fall for every little thing that comes down the pipe. You know, we didn't put ourselves here. So, therefore, there have to be one greater than us that made all of this possible. So, to the creator, we give thanks. Blessed and merciful Father, we come before you at this moment, O Lord, to just lift up your holy name, to magnify you and to give you your grace, to give you your honor, to give you your praise for keeping us, O Lord, for bringing us out safely this day, bringing us home safely this day, and for those who are still out, keeping us under your fall. 
Father God, we thank you, O Lord, for your many blessings because anything and everything could have transpired today, but you have shielded us and kept us safe. For that, we are indeed truly thankful. Father God, as to your word, one man planteth, another man watereth, but you giveth the increase. 963 IMG is indeed your platform. I am your tool. Therefore, you use this platform as you see it fit. Use me as your tool to work and till the ground, to either plant, to either water. But Father God, you giveth the increase. So for those who are come and listen, we ask that you increase upon them tonight. We ask that you continue to be a blessing unto us all through your Son, by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And gentlemen, we got a great show lined up for you tonight. And then again, really and truly, which night don't we have a great show lined up? Tell me. It was one of these days you'll be like, come on, man, I hear that madness before. As you know, we come before you just to lift him up and to do his will. And, you know, tonight is like no other night. Because we got not one, but two dynamic guests. In about five minutes, of course, you know, we're going to take our poet. So like I said, I have some beautiful um, dynamic speakers coming up tonight. We are even venturing out and taking a, a run on the wild side of things. What do I mean by the wild side, ladies and gentlemen?
wow, 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 wow. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm so sorry about that. off with some Esther Phillips. You know, it is indeed Black Women's Month. Is it, is it Black Women's Month or is it just Women's History Month? Leave it up to me. I won't care. Always putting a spin on things. Always getting myself in trouble. I tell you what. <laughs> if you want me to. Coming up, coming up right about now, ladies and gentlemen, let me just clear the way and make the floor possible for M-M-M-M-M-M. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of introducing to you guys tonight a lovely, lovely young lady. Now, I'm going to get myself in a whole bunch of trouble if I don't know how to control my spirit. See, a young man should know how to control two things. Control your spirit. Control, well, three things. So all you young boys that's listening. See, I got a couple of gray stuff up here now, so I could call you guys whippersnappers. All right? <laughs> you got to know how to control your spirit. You got to know how to control your tongue. And you definitely got to know how to control your liquor. All right. <laughs> ah, I'm going to get myself in some trouble tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it says La Chocolate Box, but for me and you, we all know we are thinking hot chocolate. So, chocolate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, Patrick, how are you? I am blessed, sis. I am blessed and highly flavored. Uh, <laughs> trouble tonight. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Hey, Chocolate, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Hopefully, I don't get you in too much trouble. Man. Well, you know, the redeeming qualities of our Lord and Savior is supposed to wash me and sin. You know, Christians ain't supposed to judge. You know, okay. y'all ain't going to judge me. You know, because what I may say out of my mouth is what half of these people are thinking anyway. So okay. I'm only bold enough to, to actually say something. That's so <laughs> that's, that's, that's going to make this a very interesting mm, mm, mm. Can, Well, I'm going to start off by asking the, the question, why? Okay. I'm not, look, I'm going to even just leave it up to you to, to take it where, why go, why, why? It's, it's so much simpler than what you think. Honestly, it's just a stage name. Mm -hmm. um, and the meaning behind it is because I'm a wordsmith. I'm, I'm basically a nerd. I got to be honest with you. And the term itself, chocolate boxes in the dictionary, it means sweetly pretty or overly sentimental. Being, <laughs> I've been known to actually cry in my own poems. And Aww. La, La is the prefix for the in French or Spanish, so it just means the sweetly pretty, overly sentimental one. Mm, That's mm, it. Mm, However, mm, you know, mm. overly I got to, hold on. I got to give you I got to give you your kudos on that. You know how to clean you clean up well. <laughs> I kid you not. This is really a true story. I um I recorded an EP uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, and at the time I didn't have a stage name. It was just me and my you know uh, manager at that time. He said to me, "Well, what what is your stage name going to be?" I was only performing poetry for maybe about a year or so at that point, mm -hmm. and I. I don't know. I just, I said, you know, I really don't have anything. And he said, are you serious? You have nothing? And I remember it was an email address that I created um, after doing, helping my daughter with a book report when she was in middle school. We came across the term chocolate box. I still have the dictionary. I kid wow. you not. So when people ask me to prove it, I'm like, here's a snapshot. It really <laughs> is. And you can look it up. The term varies a little bit, but it basically means sweetly pretty or overly sentimental. I'm going to take your word for it. So ladies and gentlemen, right without, uh, uh, listen, dash box. <laughs> listen, I'm going to just let, what is it again? Sweetly pretty sentiment. The, 
sweetly pretty, overly sentimental. Um, yeah. So All right. You, yep, that's what it means. So I want so, you, to, I want you to move us right now because see, before we go any further, this is spit mm -hmm. spiritually powered, inspirational thoughts. Right. So now we want you to be that wordsmith, that sweetly sensitive, mm -mm -mm -mm, <laughs> finger licking good. Uh, oh my goodness. Let me, you know, hit me with something. My audience want to hear something. Hey, let's say, you know what? I'll give you something soft for now. You okay. know, for okay. now, whatever. Um, it's Women's History Month. And, um, you know, if the piece is called Why I Cry, you know, women are known for being the purveyors of the tears. You know, men cry as well. But you know what? As a single mom, I wrote this piece for that. So here we go. Why I Cry. Why I Cry. Well, there could be many a viable reason, maybe the changing of the season. However, the truth is, my future stole away one night, committing suicidal high treason. Perhaps it, my future, saw happiness as nothing more than a fable, an act of abnormal disease fun. I said, perhaps it, my future, saw happiness as nothing more than a fable, an act of abnormal disease fun. Mm. Undeniable is this thought? Don't be quick to jest or defy. Hear my illustrative account whereby these almond-shaped eyes broke down to cry. Hear the trepidation in terms that not only establish, but without question, they exemplify factual accounts of when a heart grew so heavy with doleful comprehension, it wept in an attempt to identify. I cry because a hungry child keeps tugging, the rent man keeps bugging, and I don't mind keeps shrugging. When will this all end, I scream? In defeat, a body in folded form, face down, my knees, I keep hugging. I cry because my job is senseless, a single mom left defenseless. Choices made and past created this tangible suffering, plausible yet endless. An incessant climb to top, weighed down by limited options, lacking the necessary coalesce, overwhelming and pungent with no real noticeable progress. I cry for financial woes, an unquestionable hit or miss. They say that naive ignorance tends to prosper on this fundamental bliss. Tell me, can you really grasp and comprehend what I'm saying? All of this? Sorrow mixed with tears, these intrinsic facts I hiss. Fill me as I envelop with passion, scorn heartbreaks, sweet kiss. Listen to my heartfelt cry. Hear how a deprived tolerance wilted then decayed as it died. It took the hurts of the world and locked them deep down inside. Distant thoughts with preoccupied mind on continuous fares will ride. Pen to paper I write, detailed accounts of a light I woefully imply. Listen and learn as this makeshift world I dissect then circumscribe. I cry when I laugh and smile. I even cry when my heart sings. Marring my life vision, fate has a firm grip on destiny's playtime puppet strings. Once again, I've been denied access to the door tags, getting ahead, it seems. I cry because my happy ending is still missing from my fairy tale dreams. I cry as I see brown families fall, dispersed, then eventually crumble. Like ancient buildings, some think it a crime, the idea of being humble. Spread to the far ends of the earth in the dark, my brown family they now stumble. My spirit is plagued by brown families silent screams as they pierce, clatter, then rumble. Watch me cry. Watch these tears as they simmer, then trickle from my eye. Expressive, resolute, and recently, they come in large supply. Built from anger, agitation, and of course, emotions gone awry. They are my present, past, and future. These determined tears, even gravity, will not deny. I hear, exhale, then cleanse the hurt. I endure, tell tall tales. Corrupt logic, I attempt to divert. In the end, I instinctively rewrite a life plan. I restart, then begin my lifestyle reassert. With reserved progression, a missed disappointment, and false perceived accession. After I try and try and try. With no foreseeable choice, I temporarily accept this depression. I said, I temporarily accept this depression. I then take a moment, I sit down, and I cry. That's that piece. I 
psychologist she is, a spit, you know, not, actually back in the day, this is what we would do, you know, we'd finger uh-huh. snap, they would finger snap, a spit allergist. Now, <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been doing poetry, sis? I've been writing poetry um, monologues for many years, but I only been performing since like 2009. Um, it was just something I did for myself. You know, I'm just a creative person in all aspects of the arts. And this is just one part of what I do. And I don't know, I just I was going through a bad, you know, relationship, the job at the time I didn't like, and I wanted to have an outlet for, you know, I don't drink or anything like that. So I started performing on stage and it completely took off like crazy. <laughs> People wow. actually liked, I do a lot of monologues, so, um, I like to, like, full costume. I trained in performing arts. So, you know, I, I've mm-hmm. done full costumes. I've had dancers. I've had other actors or players on stage with me role-playing while performing. So whenever I have the opportunity, that's, you know, what I prefer to do. Um, but, you know, it's been for a minute. So 2009, 2009, I started. 2009. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, I understand, you know, when you say monologue, you know, mm-hmm. please explain to to our listeners the different genre or well, not genre, sorry, the different levels they are to poet to spoken word slash poetry. Because see, there's a difference between a spoken word artist and a poet. And you know, with you now dropping dialogues and stuff like that, talk to me. Um, well, like a monologue, um, some people call it like a long speech. Monologues oftentimes are, are lengthy. Sometimes they could be like five, upwards of 10, 12 minutes. And oftentimes you're, you're either in character, speaking from the heart. Um, there's other, like with poem or poetry, I know there, uh, there are sometimes people do slam. Slam is oftentimes constricted to a time period or mm-hmm. a, a time constraint sometimes two and a half, three minutes. I've seen some even go as four. I particularly, I think I've maybe in the beginning competed in like one or two slams and that was it. After that, I've been a judge in numerous slams from the creative aspect. I can't adhere to times and I I marvel at people that actually do that, but that's just not my thing. <laughs> I, I need that, that, that connection with the words and I need more time. Um, right. And also I perform with music, so um, spoken word, oftentimes um, people associate that with, you know, the memorization, uh, which allows you to be more, I feel more powerful, more um, elaborate, more um, entertaining, more engaging in, in, you know, in your words. So oftentimes spoken word artists do memorize, so they kind of have that, that impact right. when they're speaking. Um, poetry, you can simply read. I've done that before. You can just read your piece from the paper again. Poetry can be a stanza. It could be uh, prose. It could be literally a minute, you know, just a few lines. It, it's right. not really confined to anything. So those are kind of, you know, some of the ones that I participate in that I know and that are the most popular, the ones that people recognize the most. So so let me ask you this, because mm-hmm. see, seeing that it's um, women's history m- – month or woman's month right you know what is it you see that you're contributing or leave or putting out there for you know those females behind you that's coming up um hmm, let's see i think that women's history um by performing you know um Mm -hmm. with sister empress um my coming out is to share Um, to acknowledge, to share, um, to share my stories, to acknowledge other women's stories. And, you know, oftentimes we grow. You may sit in the audience, and I've had this happen before, and I listen to another poet. I'm like, wow, somebody else went through the same thing I went through. Or vice versa. Um, You know, on top of also, you know, performing and different things, I'm all um, an advocate for domestic violence. And I do a lot of performances with, with regards to domestic violence. And the first time that I performed uh, a piece, there was a young lady that literally cried in the audience. And I literally had to stop and I just went over and hugged her. 
Um, another time I, you know, was doing a performance and someone stood up and immediately gave their testimony. And at that point, everything stops. You let these women speak because you know what? It's, it's out there and, and they want to tell people they, they want to have, um, you know, that sisterly love. And that's kind of what women's history is about. Mm. You know, it sounds like speaking. you're also a minister with the with with, with the with the <laughs> word, because you know, that's that, that's what you do. You minister the word, and people you wow. know come to their hallelujah moment and just feel like just wusa and just letting wow. it out. You know, so that that's a beautiful thing. That that it that's is, really what it, it definitely is. Definitely is. Yeah, it man. Definitely is. All right, sis, tell me, because you know, I know you 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 are a very powerful young lady, and you're doing some big things with some big folks. Tell me right. what's going on March 14th. Well, her story. Her <laughs> Empress story. Poetry presents her story, you know, celebration of Women's History Month. And I'm um, one of the uh, featured performers there mm -hmm. and coming out to do my thing. And again, you know, share some stories from, um, from a personal standpoint, from a community standpoint. And from an observation standpoint, those are the three areas that I wanted to focus on, you know. Um, so those, you know, actually presenting a, a couple of monologues with that and hopefully the audience will enjoy it. You know, um, I don't, I wouldn't say that I come for the shock factor, but I, I like to speak real, you know. I, I like to speak as real as I possibly can and sometimes people don't like that sometimes they're like wow you really said that because it really happens this is what's going on in the world so um but you know that's what i plan on doing <laughs> i'm looking forward to it all right so i'm gonna give you the opportunity to, to hit us with one more piece before you before you go hit us okay. with your you know hit us with your best shot let uh wait you know how black folks are right we got a comedian coming up after you. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to fold my arms. I'm going to be like, make me laugh. Go ahead. Make me laugh. Okay. Make me laugh. Make you laugh. So, so no, no, you're a poet. I, I, I want you to make me cry. Oh, boy. I don't know if I can make you cry. Um, <laughs> you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta control my words here. But no. Ooh, um, yes, oh, yes, ooh, yes, no, no. yes. Um, you know what? I, one piece I wanted to, to share is called Invisible Chains because the chains that bind us as a people nowadays is actually in our mind. We're mm. no longer physically bound, it's in our mind. So this piece is called Invisible Chains. It takes a man that has lived a thousand years to understand a man that has only lived a single day. He teaches life is truly what you make it, whether it's a week or the course of a lifespan. Stay proud, dear black man, for a dying hope be not at stake yet. He says, these invisible chains persist in blistering this here black skin, I insist. So brother, take care how you address me, lest you lethally convince the masses that I plus you and yours are all classless and nothing but worthless souls, every she, every he. These chains, these invisible chains are all around us. They are on us, they come before us. Encased in depredation, they abhor us. They are weighted crutches and homogenous mass. A struggling brother kept down by another is certainly an undeniable and devious task. It takes a woman that has lived only a thousand hours to understand a woman that has lived a millennia. Mm. She teaches a soul sisterhood is not one to be broken. Pass the word down the line. Forgo all that ego shine, as doing so will avoid you being labeled a token. She says, invisible chains wrap around this delicate black throat. My truth to you, I dare not cope. At times, my voice stays silent and stifle. My mahogany-colored skin fused with unscented estrogen. To some, make my efforts seem lax and trifle. These chains, these invisible chains, are burnt into our psyches. They are fortuitous. They travel in and through with us, subconsciously. Some have returned to the back of us. It seems these chain links grow starker as the shade of brown goes darker. A sister whose skin is like that of charred sand is at time a woman whose work is less than. Her body on occasion is used as a label marker. It takes the soul of a slave who lived 3,000 months over, that's three times a grand, to understand the plights of this here woman and this here man. He says, 
Why do you not take heed to what has become common creed? Tis your mind that creates these chains, and of your future, they now take lead. I see things haven't changed much. Many seem complacent and such. Those chains a hindrance will stop you where you stand. Now invisible, they haven't been mentally banned. Dear brother and sister of mine, my arduous task is certainly divine, but I must advise you of the devilish plot that's been planned. He says, growth in knowledge is what you need. Digest these ideas, I plead. Your body is simply a metaphorical and physical vessel. Strive to be bigger than your dreams. Realize you must go about it in teams, lest in your mind these chains will continue to nestle. It is fact that some would like for us to remain divided and in the dark, uneducated, unknowing, and hating one another. You know, like the times when this divide was by way of unconcealed, branded mark, splitting father from son and daughter from mother. These chains, these invisible chains, are only seen by you. Look around. They break down without sound. Prosperity will indeed sever them. However, you must attain to live joyously within your few. It took a thousand years and a day to display what took a thousand hours and a millennia to convey for three times a thousand months to now scrub away the brainwash mm. of an entire race subjugated through foul play. He finishes, these chains, these invisible chains, architects of the oppressed mindset may lay, will in time weaken, then crack, then fade where they lay. And maybe, just maybe, Within the next thousand minutes, we can begin that process inside of this very day. That's that piece. So, with that, St. Patrick, <laughs> I know that some people are, you know, when I first introduced myself as La Chocolate Box, I have to say, you know, I typically explain that it really is a play on words. Right. But throughout the years, it has become assembled for that crazy cheap box of chocolates that you get at like the dollar store. Uh -huh. you know, I gotta say that, you know, the ones where they don't have the label on the uh -huh. inside to tell you what you're eating. <laughs> That's me. Cause when I get on stage, you don't know what I'm going to say. It could wow. be community piece. It could be, it could be sultry. It could be erotic. It could be, you know, I could be like spitting like some drama on top of like, you know, a uh, 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 guitar. I mean, I'm just saying, you really never know what's going to come out. It can make you cry, it can make you laugh. So mm. now the chocolate boxes, you know, like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. So I pride myself on that. But thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Amen, amen. Like, like Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolate. Yeah, it's, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, you know... <laughs> Now you see why. That was your first question. <laughs> and you answered why. Wow. Exactly. Interviewed a big interview with just one question. Why? Why? <laughs> exactly. That's it. You need nothing else. And that's it. 963 IMG. I'm your boy St. Patrick, and I got the beautiful La chocolate box with me. You could catch her this coming Saturday, March 14th at the Inkwell, ladies and gentlemen. 1165 Bedford Avenue, Brooklyn, right at the corner of Putnam Avenue in, it's now renamed, it's no longer um, Stuyvesant, Bedford Stuyvesant, it's now Stuyvesant Heights, gentrification and all, you know what I'm saying? Go check them out. Sister, before I let you go, just tell us yes. where we can find you on social media. Sure, you can find me on Instagram under La Chocolate Box, all one word, that's L-A Chocolate Box. I am a poet, um, fashion designer, and stylist. I am also an actress, so I do a lot of theater work, um, a political activist, um, a, a little bit of everything. Oh, and a uh, red carpet um, interviewer. So, I Man, also, you know yeah. what? I, we gonna talk because I I needed you for a concert that I was that I that we did for the Bahamas. We needed a interviewer to interview the folks after they came off stage. We gonna talk. Yeah, definitely. You must be Absolutely. Jamaican. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you know you, what? 
Let me tell you, the <laughs> chocolate box brand has carried me a long, long way. So hit me up Instagram, um, also Facebook, La Chocolate Box. Um, my design label is House of Goge. That's House of G O G E. So you can see some of my design pieces, or just come to La Chocolate Box on Instagram and you'll see basically everything that I do. All right, beautiful thing. Thank you, sis. We'll talk soon. The chocolate box. Come get some. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. Nine six three IMG man, I'm rolling out of what <clears throat> I am telling you. I must be the man tonight, tonight, tonight. Rolling out of one interview into the next, ladies and gentlemen. I got the one and only. You know, this is a first. You, you, you know, can I say? You know, you, you, you. <clears throat> is it is is it okay to say you're popping my 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 cherry as far as interviewing a comedian? Yes, yes, you can say that. I can say that. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I know I'm going to get into some trouble. Everyone, you know, my, my audience is like, oh, my God. I can't believe he said that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the one and only Joanna Briss. Uh, oh, I know I was going to mess up your name. Um, <laughs> Bridley. Briley. Briley, Briley, Briley. I got Miss Briley with me, ladies and gentlemen. The beautiful sister is sitting right here. Let me just get her picture up so y'all could see her. There she is, Miss Briley. Good after, well, good morning, good evening, good night to anywhere you are. Where are you in the world right now? I am in Brooklyn, New York. All right, so it, it, it's night for you, me and you. <laughs> yes, it is. Spoken, well, we, we just interviewed a spoken word artist. And like oh. I said, you are my first comedian that, oh. I am, that I'm interviewing on 963 IMG Radio. And just like... That means other, we go together now. Huh? That means we go together now. Oh, we... Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait. We... <laughs> I'm your first. I'm your, you my first... Yep. So I can't get rid of you now? Nope. Uh, uh, see what I, what happened, right? <laughs> what happened was, what happened? What happened? Yeah. Um, look, no, it's, it's, it's indeed amazing because, see, ladies and gentlemen, this sister comes to you with, I mean, a plethora of accolades. I mean, you are a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. So let me see if I could run through it. Not only are you a, a actress, a uh, comedian, you're also a writer. You work for the MTA. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, I got to put your, your you know, I, I, I got to put this up there because I, um, I was sitting there and I was like, okay, I got to brand her. And how are we going to brand her tonight. See, you are the doctor comedian. Yeah, I like that. There you go. You are the, com the yeah, you are my residential nut because you crazy <laughs> just like myself. That's right. Let me put it up there because, you That's know, you ain't though. got no sense and nope. neither do nope. I. And <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You know? you know, a little bit of honesty, right? Yes. All, All right. right. So there it is. So you have you you fill so many so many caps. Now, please explain to us when I say doctor, why why what's the doctor and why doctor? Uh, well, I have a degree in psychology. I uh, graduated in two thousand two, and you know, having a degree in psychology gives you the ability to read people mm -hmm. and understand their motive, and uh, in comedy, that is a plus. Mm, mm, mm. Indeed, indeed. You know, 
it, let me let because see it, the the question is back into acts you know <laughs> i i know you know psychology is one thing so you know you get all up into people's head you know you 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 yes. play you you play you you unscramble the puzzle <laughs> which is the mind now yeah. What's the you know what's the significance or the correlation between a psychologist and a comedian? Because you have to be you 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 must be sitting down having just a good old time laughing to yourself. Oh, I indeed because <laughs> <laughs> as a comedian with a degree in psychology, I understand um, temperament. I understand cadence and, you know, with the mind, know what people want to laugh at, Mm -hmm. uh, gauging through your words, because, you know, everything, words are are movement. Mm -hmm. Words, you get a reaction, just like with poetry. You are able to elicit a reaction. So having a degree in psychology, being a comedian, while I'm on stage, I am... I would say 90% writing on stage. I do not like to have a set. Um, If if you've ever watched me, um, I don't like to write a set out. Um, I just like to freestyle. I like to go up there cold and just see what, you know, my skill set can bring to the stage because uh, I like organic um, mm. sometimes being structured and that's that's part of I um, also have a background in Sanford Meisner uh, acting method which is uh, based off of improv and that's what I do I get on stage and I just see what I could do I live in the moment which is part of uh, the Meisner brand wow. and I just let things organically happen and and uh i'm going to say and nine times out of ten it's magic it's magic on stage because wait Sam- wait wait so you you know <clears throat> it's magic so i know there is a you know you say meisner there is the the 12 step process of <laughs> being or the making of a good comedian see a lot of people yeah. don't know that see see right all right so before you get to the magic because you go gonna have to drop some magic on us tonight because i'm gonna fold my hands and be <laughs> like yo make me laugh yo make me <laughs> laugh so before we get to the magic explain to us what the 12 steps of meisner are uh, well, to making no, the, no, 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 no. to making of a yeah. poet I'm the well, making of a comedian. It's sorry. Okay, I, listen. It's all right. Take your time. I understand. I'm your first. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not going nowhere. Take your time, young man. <laughs> Mama, Mama used, to, used say, to say. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, well, the twelve steps of comedy was a format that um, my one of my second, he was my second um, comedy uh, instructor. Uh, he had stages that we go through as comedians. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And it allowed me to knock some of the edge off when I got on stage because uh, the psychology of comedy is most of the time people are on stage, they're seeking something. Mm-hmm. They're seeking validation. They're looking at the audience as an extension of whatever personal uh, issues they've had as children mm. um, to work out on stage. Um, and so Tim said uh, to go up there and not seek validation from the people that are watching you. Most of the time, you know, you're being judged, you know, and as a woman in comedy, you know, one of the things, the, the way you're dressed, you know, how much makeup you have on, how much cleavage, cleavage you're showing, mm-hmm. all those things play a part before you even open your mouth. Uh, people are looking at you. As soon as they say, uh, which is, is kind of you know not cool when a, a host, oh, bring up a female comedian. Uh, why don't you just bring up a comedian? Mm. You know? 
So, so which leads me to ask this question. Mm -hmm. What do you see the big contrast between being, um, you know, a female comedian versus your male counterparts? Uh, it, well, there's bias. Of course, there's bias. It's always, because, you know, comedy has always been a male-dominated uh, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. um, the stigma of women aren't funny is so untrue. Um, I've been in the audience and I've watched men just laugh. Uh, but, Man, you know, a woman is indeed do. funny. I've been married six times and I, I laugh at all six of the past wives. They y'all are the funniest. No, let me stop. I haven't. <laughs> I'm, done. I'm like, uh, we're gonna have to get you on the couch for real. <laughs> you got issues. I got <laughs> issues. <laughs> Quiet to okay. Listen, as you as you so rightly put it, you are my first, and you know with anything that's good that is the first, you need to have seconds. I am looking at the time, and I know I'm gonna have to bring you back because we got about we got about nine minutes, you know, give or take, and I want you to spit something for me, but I also want you to go through, you know, being that it's black. His, uh, Black Women's Month or Women's Month, you know, you're doing some 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 tremendous things, and I don't know why we're getting the feedback right now. Um, we're doing some. You have been doing some tremendous thing within the community with your with your programs. Please explain to me, um, F Empire, what that is, and you know your festival. Oh. Um... As a, a black woman in the comedy uh, business, I've uh, been in the game about 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came up in it, there weren't that many black women. And when I saw black women, I was very excited. So fast forward to 2018, there was a discussion about a festival uh, where there were no black women in mm -hmm. New York City. And someone questioned it. And in the midst of the question, I was like, well, you know what? How about we create our own festival? And so Black Women in Comedy Festival was born in 2018. The festival was 2019, and here it is 2020, and we're going to be doing it again October 8th through October 11th, 2020, in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Uh, I also manage Brooklyn House of Comedy, which is the uh, one of the only Black comedy clubs in the tri-state area of New York City is female run, uh, black owned. I'm very proud of that. So the festival gives us um, the opportunity to showcase uh, at least 50 black women from all over. Mm. And it was such an experience. Women are still resonating about it to this day. Frankie French was one of the women uh, that I met. I never met her before the festival. And now we're really close. Uh, she's doing amazing. Um, she got selected to be the NBC diversity winner. She went on to L.A. You know, she's doing great. Um, Coco Fresh was seen in the festival because, you know, industry comes to the festival. When you have a festival, one of the things is you get industry to show up. Uh, Coco French, she was able to be on True TV's Laugh Tracks uh, because of our festival. So my job as a festival director mm -hmm. is to bring attention to the fact that there's so many dope black women doing stand-up that are writers, that are creators, that need to be seen. And so that's what uh, I want my legacy to be, is to create a pathway for black women to be seen, heard, and not ignored in the industry. Wow, wow, wow. And your festival is a, it's how long does it go for? And the when? fourth festival in Bedside, Brooklyn. I will be at Brooklyn House of Comedy. Mm -hmm. There's a venue called uh, Corners BK and Tilly's. So far, we have three venues that we will have showcases twice a night, plus seminars on the weekend, and then this fabulous brunch on Sunday. My um, co-producer is Holly Harper. I'm happy to have her um, with me helping out. Uh, it's, it's So far, it's been amazing. The women are signing up. Uh, so right now, I'm in the stage of selecting who will be uh, part of the second annual 
Black Women in Comedy Festival, which will go on until infinity, because this is the blueprint for the industry to come and check out fabulous black women uh, in one spot. But where else but the mecca of New York City? Mm. I don't understand how this festival was never done prior to me creating it. Um, I'm so happy to be on the front lines of it because we deserve to be seen. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. You know, it, it, it's it's an amazing thing that you are doing, you know, and you work with kids also, young ladies, and you do, um, you try to pull them out their box and, and, and to get them right. to use their talent to shine. Right. It's, a, it's about mentoring young girls mm -hmm. and using stand-up comedy as a tool for public speaking, mm -hmm. for confidence building, and being able to articulate in, in a society, like I said, that doesn't normally value women so by empowering them on how to use humor to break the ice because humor is such a gift I uh, just grew up loving to laugh watching Saturday Night Live Second City Television and my age for myself <laughs> <laughs> yes you are <laughs> cool. and, and so having that I gained a lot of confidence I know people if you make them laugh they're your friend for life Amen. True that. True that. True that. You know, we are going to have to, like I say, man, I'm going to have to bring you back because, well, you know, there is so much to unwrap. I you know, agree. Um, just to just to let our audience know, give us some of the um, shows that they have seen. They, they may have seen you on on TV or on the big screen or in, you know, in, in public media. Where where would they have seen you? I was on, uh, I, listen, I love reality TV. Mm -hmm. Atlanta Housewives is my favorite show. Uh, Guilty Pleasure, I was on Watch What Happened Live with Andy Cohen. I was a bartender a few years ago. I got to meet the president from Scandal as well as the young lady in Get Out. Uh, they, uh, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see it. Um, I've been on a, quite a few things. I can't really rattle them off right now, but I'm dope. I'm pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. You know, I'm pretty dope. I'm All pretty right. Dope. Look, so, we got about three minutes, so I want you to, before, I can't even go to no music. I can't even do a segue. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving you some dope right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, as in this industry, one of the things that's um, looked or frowned upon, it, upon is, you know, being single in the industry. Mm. And I choose to be single. You understand? I, I choose to be single so much so that I have a twin bed. I sleep in a twin bed. Okay? Because <laughs> I, I don't even want to tip myself. You understand? <laughs> As a single woman, you know, when I roll over and I feel that cold, <laughs> empty space, I just get so frustrated. You know, I get sad. Mm. So I said, let me get a twin bed, all right? Because if I roll over, I'm just going to fall on the floor, okay? That's it. I'm going <laughs> to get a dose of reality, and then I'm going to be able to find my Doritos because they really under my bed. That's where my snacks are. So I'm going to just roll under the bed, eat my Doritos, and be happy because being single is not a curse. Okay, mm. I love being single. I love it. I think it's one of the best times of my life as a uh, <laughs> fifty-year-old. <clears throat> mm. uh, being single, I'm working on myself. I'm trying to lose weight. I said, I'm trying to get an hourglass figure. Right now, I'm at ninety minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get down to an hour. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's everybody. I'm at ninety minutes. It's okay. It's okay. You gotta love yourself. You're trying to get an hourglass figure. You're at ninety minutes. All right. <laughs> yes, I just I just wrote that. And part of part of writing is just being real with yourself. I just had a show, and I'm over fifty. I'm in denial. I don't want to get glasses. I'm just telling you, people that are listening. If you get older, just get the glasses. I wore a blue jumpsuit with a black jacket and I thought the jumpsuit was black. Okay, <laughs> I get on stage and it's blue 
and then the audience is, I'm like, wait, wait, you mean this is, so I know I'm in denial about my age, because you mm-hmm. saw, if you see the picture, mm-hmm. I look like I'm about 25, you know what I'm saying? I All right, <laughs> listen, tell our audience where they can catch you, I know you're going to be at the Inkwell. Yes, this Saturday, March 14th, I'll be on the CJ Empress Poetry Show, she invites me as the only comedian, um, so I'm busting my cherry. Mm. Busting my cherry. I'm busting my cherry at the poetry show this Saturday at 8 o'clock at the Inkwell on Bedford Avenue in Putnam, 8 o'clock. Um, it's a cash bar, so if you like to get your sip on, I need you to come near and get your laugh on with me and all the poets. Um, it's Women's History Month, so the lineup features uh, all women, and I think there's a special guest a male uh, special guest. And I'm going to be in the house too, man. I'm going to come and support. I'm going to be there. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I'll be there. We're going to do this. We're going to make it happen. Uh, okay, so I'm wearing. Okay, what you gonna wear? Cause it's a quad. You know what? I'm wearing. I'm wearing a clown suit. I'm, I, I I need glasses myself. <laughs> I got to let you go, sis. We will be. <laughs> this is spirit, spiritually powered inspirational thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta bring you back, man. You know, I, I, we, you know, I done prematurely all over this spot, and, and we are gonna have to bring you back. I love you. We will see you. On- <laughs> What up, what up, what up? What up, what up, my people? Yeah, man. Yep, 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 yep. You know, sir, when you see it, it's your power oh, couple. Yep. Yes, the last ways. Yeah. yeah, man. We just want to let you know that the 31st of this, this month. month will be an exclusive interview yep, yep. with the 963 IMG, IMG Radio, Radio. Passy. Yes, let's win. will be live connected up, up up and running so we yes, want sir. you guys to tune in make sure say tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, to tell a friend. yes yes man you don't want to miss that interview so i'm on facebook fans instagram youtube tune make in. sure say tune in, tune in. Yeah, that that train will be there. yeah 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 we're sending up the prayer Every day. see you there God bless. We'll say that. Sunday morning, a collection of 25 great gospel hits, like the Canton Spirituals, I get mistreated for some time. the Reverend James Cleveland and John P. Key, the Pilgrim Jubilees and Reverend Milton Brunson, it's DJ Reverend Clay Chris Evans and the Georgia the Mass Choir, bringing you the greatest hits, DJ Chris Stay tuned and don't you skip That's all in a regular yeah, dance or style Keep up anything you want to the right just or life With DJ Chris on the mix Stay blessed with DJ Chris on the mix Call right now and receive two cassettes or two CDs Every morning can be like Sunday morning 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 and the Mississippi Mass Choir. Here's how to Ninety-six-three IMG Radio DJ Chris on the mix.